the subject of corporate meetings. Okay, so this sounds about like as exciting as watching paint dry, but it's really important that if you have set up an LLC or an S Corp or some other kind of corporate protection, you need to legally, by law, you have to be holding regular, as in at least annual, corporate meetings. And so oftentimes these are called an annual shareholders meeting and or a annual board of directors meeting. And if, and it, it, since you're a person who's watching this, it's very likely that your shareholders and your board of directors are the same. And so you can, you can combine them together into one meeting. Now realize, as I say all this, I'm not a lawyer. You need to check the law for your particular state because it's really important. If you do not do this, you risk what is called piercing the corporate veil. So let me just give you an example of this. Someone is Someone comes to visit you, they walk up your steps, they fall down, they break their neck. Okay, now, the person who who does that, if they were coming for a business meeting, your homeowner's insurance probably doesn't cover that because they were there for business purposes. And here's what's going to happen. You say, well, that's why I've got a corporation so that I can't be personally sued. But if you don't have your corporate meetings being consistently held and documented in uh, in a file, then what ends up happening is the, the people who are suing you can do what's called piercing the corporate veil, which means your corporation is as, is as if it never existed. They can still go after your corporate assets, but they can also go after your personal assets, your home and things like that. So this is very important because the first thing a lawyer does when you're going to get sued is they're go- if it's your corporation involved, the first thing they're going to ask for is this right here, your corporate record book. They have a legal right to get to it. And if your stuff is not kept up to date in it, when they access that, they say, they didn't hold a corporate an, an annual meeting uh, one of the last five years. We're piercing the corporate veil. They'll go to a judge and the judge will say, you're right. And now they get, and now they get to go, out, go, go after your home. All right. So you don't want to be liable personally. And I realize I'm talking technical stuff here, but you know what? It's important that you do it. So at least once a year, you need to have that annual meeting. And in it, you need to record the meetings of that me- of that uh, of that meeting. Now realize that this the, the meetings you take could someday be exposed to the public through a lawsuit, through them going after to see if they can port, cor, uh, pierce your corporate veil or not. And so you need to take them in a way that the things that are in them could potentially go public someday. So realize that. And then you need to sign them and keep them in a book. In my case, I just went and bought a book. You can go to Amazon and you can buy a corporate record book. I like it being read because then it's always easy to find. And here, see, years of doing this. All right. Now, you have to do this even if you are the sole shareholder. It's a legal requirement in the vast majority of states in the United States. And... Once again, another reminder, I am not a lawyer. And so don't take any of this as legal advice. This is just the things I've experienced. So those minutes are important. Let's talk about what should happen in that meeting so you know what to, what to do. So those minutes should record the meeting, the, the meeting time and date, the attendees and who did not attend. And if you're the sole, sole shareholder, or maybe it's just you and your and your partner are the sole shareholders, okay, then you write down, down those two things. And so we both attended or one of us did not attend and, 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 and why. And then you have to record what was discussed. Now, let's talk about what some of the things that should be talked about in one of these annual meetings. So one of them is, hey, what, how many shares have been issued for your company? In my case, there's just X thousand shares. They're all owned by me. And so I can just say there's no change from the past year. So shareholding was discussed. No change from the past year. The officers and directors. In my case, it's a, it's a one-person company. And so the officer is me. The directors are myself and my wife. And so the officers and directors are... In this case, no change. And so every year it says officers and directors, no change. Now, now we need to get into some 
technical legal things that you are required to have a corporate meeting about in order to approve them before they happen. So what, some of these things might have to get handled in a separate meeting other than a shareholders meeting, okay? But these are things that all in, in some states are required by law to be approved by the shareholders or, or by the directors or officers of the company. Okay, bank accounts. So technically, if you need to go set up a new savings account for your, for your business, you technically have to have that go through a, a, a director's meeting. And so... Sometimes you'll you'll say, hey, no change, or sometimes you'll have to say, hey, the the company opened up a new account at this new bank, and so we're approving that change. Okay, now this is where I'm not a lawyer gets important because can you do that in in the past in your particular state? All right. Next, major purchases. What major pur purchases did you make during the the last year? If it's from the past, you're approving them. If it's planned, which is the ideal way of doing it, you're approving the plan to purchase those. Now, more technical things. Sell leaseback agreements. It, probably not going to apply to most of our businesses, but every once in a while, you'll have something where you sell it to, you maybe sell your IP, sell all your course materials, and they lease it back to you. It's a tax strategy. And so if you're going to get in that, realize that needs to be approved by your board of directors. Anytime you award a dividend, that needs to be approved. If you purchase either another company or purchase the assets of another company. So this is a fairly common one, at least it ought to be for all of us, which is you've got competitors who would be willing to sell to you. So then you get their list, you get their, their website, you get all their traffic, all those things, oftentimes for a very, very small amount, that needs to be approved by your shareholders. Next, selling corporate assets. So let's say you have you have decided that you don't need this asset that you were using before. You got to get that approved. If you're going to take a loan or a line of credit, that's got to be approved. If you do, if you approve that certain things will be in re reimbursed to your corporate officers, so travel, a car, something like that, that needs to be approved. If you change your accounting methods from a cash to an accrual basis, that needs to be approved. If you decide to go with us S-Corp election, and notice I'm not explaining all these because each one of these things is a video in and of themselves, but just realize you now have heard about, hey, this thing called an S-Corp election, which makes your taxes be significantly simpler in many cases. That needs to be approved. And so when you think about, hey, when, when your accountant says, hey, perhaps you should do an S corp, corp election, then just think, oh, Don said something about that. Oh, yes, he said I need to have a board of directors meeting on that one. And I am mixing up board of directors meeting and, and shareholders meetings because I'm assuming that as a one or two person com uh, company in terms of shareholders, you're going to combine those two into the same thing. I don't know which ones technically need to be done and which ones, which meeting and which ones don't. Since I'm one, I just do it all together in the same one. If you make some kind of employment employee benefit plan changes, okay, so we're going to now pay for insurance or something like that, which, by the way, all these things have tax implications too. You just can't just go do that with certain kinds of corporations. And you may need to hold other meetings during your year in addition to your annual annual meeting to be able to do that. Now, the, the, that other meeting may take you five minutes, okay? We've decided we need uh, to get a line of credit, okay? We're holding a shareholders meeting. Boom, the attendees are ding, ding, okay? Here's what we have discussed. Need to get a line of credit. And so this was approved by a unanimous vote of everyone there, okay? All right, now you want to document these again in this corporate record book put those meetings in it, meeting notes in it, signed and dated by the, by, the, uh, by the corporate officer and put them in there. And I urge you, the reason why, I, why I'm talking about all this is don't neglect this. My suggestion is make it a standard part of your January. Every January we have this meeting and we just do it, we document it, we put it in there. And then if we have other things, a need for a loan, need for a bank account change, major asset purchase, something like that, you can hold it five-minute meeting and approve it because you don't have to get 
shareholders together from all over the world. It's just maybe you, maybe you and a partner. Now, it, all this feels like a pain and it is sort of a pain, but it's worth it. If ever anything happens and someone tries to, put, to pierce your cor corporate veil, you just pull out that red book. They look at it and they say, okay, you did a good job here. You're, you're, you get to keep your corporate status and you are protected by that. So may I suggest this just becomes something you do. It's not hard. It's just sort of a pain to do it. <laughs> Sorry about that. A lot of business is that way. It's, it's not hard. It's just sort of a pain. So there you go. By the way, you can have a bunch of other things that happen in that meeting. I suggest you hold that meeting, do the technical legal things that, we, that I just talked about in here, close that meeting and open another meeting. In that one, then you start talking about your traffic and your profitability and all those other, all those other elements. Just don't want to have that in the meetings that could someday go public. I'll hold that in a separate private meeting, which is also very valuable to hold. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.